Scoot up for a second and let's talk. Yo, DJ, roll that beautiful champagne footage. Welcome to Champagne Secrets, where the bubbles are crisp, the secrets are smoother than silk, and the gossip flows like the finest champagne. Big up yourself, Empress. Glasses up to the streets that never sleep and to the secrets running deep. Let's get it. Champagne Secrets. Welcome to Champagne Secrets, located in the Champagne City, baby. Get ready for some grown discussions and bubbly banter. <laughs> you already know. Over here, we give classy with a twist, huh? A little clink with chaos with a side of charm. On your way in, hit that like and subscribe so you'll be notified when we jump into the chalet for another show. So if you're ready to sip, savor, and spill, then grab your bubbly and get in here. And if you're a non-alcoholic kind of confidant, go ahead and grab your non-alcoholic bubbly. It's all good. And if you're listening in the morning, throw you some orange juice in and make it a mimosa. As for me, you already know. I'm sipping on my Moet and Chandon Imperial Rose. You see it. <laughs> Drop in the comments and let me know what you're sipping on tonight. Yes, if you're ready, let's get into it. Now y'all already know that we start our videos with some affirmations and positivity. So go ahead and take those glasses and raise them high. Are you ready? In a world that often seeks to define us, remember that your worth comes from within, your value too. Embrace the journey of discovering yourself, for in that exploration lies the key to unlocking your full potential. Your worth is not defined or determined by the opinions of others. It is a radiant light that shines from deep within your soul. Trust in your uniqueness, for it is the foundation of your strength. Validate your self-confidence with love and kindness, knowing that you are deserving of all that is good, all the good that life has to offer. Celebrate your victories, no matter how small, and let them be a testament to your resilience and your courage. You are a masterpiece in progress, and your value knows no bounds. So raise a class and cheers to you, confidant, for you are worth it. So y'all have to forgive me. I was trying to learn StreamYard earlier so I can start doing some lives and start interacting with my confidants and it scheduled a stream that I didn't know it scheduled <laughs> that I wasn't trying to schedule so my bad y'all I promise when I figure out how StreamYard and streaming works I'm going to start going live so that I can communicate with y'all and we can have conversations together because I want to hear y'all opinions on some of the stuff that's going on so please charge it to my head and not to my heart will y'all do that for me so, I took the liberty of watching all 50 episodes of Who the Fruck Did I Marry? 
and I watched them on speed because I wasn't sitting through seven hours. <laughs> I did sit through about four and was stressed the hell out by episode three. You know, I understand everybody plays the fool sometimes. But a damn fool? I don't think so. <laughs> no, ma'am. No, sir. We're not doing that. In the words of the doll, we got to be strong. I, I don't know what's going on. We not strong enough these days. So, there's a scripture in the Bible, right? Where it talks about there was a man in the tombs and... Jesus approached this man and asked him, what was your name? And his response was, my name is Legion, for we are many. So it's really quite befitting that this lady named this man Legion, because if this story is fully true, this man has more personalities than a choir director at a Baptist church. (laughs) I'm just saying, this man has more personalities than a box of crayon on caffeine, than a crackhead at a family reunion. This man has more personalities than a chameleon at a costume party. Because what? What? I was outdone. Completely outdone. As many women as there are that are supporting her, I can guarantee you there are just as many people who are saying this man needs to write a book. Please crown him. I guarantee it. Because this man conned and manipulated at least three, three women three women and I think it is absolutely insane and these are just the ones that we know about y'all I can believe it because I had a god brother and this man had his girl and his baby mama living in the same house and had them both convinced that he wasn't messing with neither one of them I cannot make this stuff up I promise you I can and I'm watching all of this unfold I even told my friend who was the baby mama pregnant at the time might I add girl you know he's still smashing this girl and she said nah uh y'all I, we cannot make this st- this story had me all sorts of ways confused I promise you it did because I didn't understand how I didn't understand why we gotta be strong no I'm sorry we gotta get strong because how 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 by the end of this saga matter of fact by the end of the house saga this ninja would have been signed signed sealed and delivered do y'all hear me ain't no way ain't no way my inner virgo would have allowed me to tolerate this for a whole year no way not a year of this nigga pissing on me and calling it rain ain't no way huh ain't no way now where there's part of the stories I can sit this her story should I say I can sit back and say yeah this poor baby was manipulated there's some parts of the story where I'm like "Uh, yeah two plus two don't quite equal four right there in that section but here's my problem with it and I'm gonna take it back to something old that was said Bush said one powerful thing when he was in office that powerful thing he said was fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me you won't fool me a third time promise you you're not gonna fool me a third time i was flabustered don't worry it's my word i was flabustered at this story not about him because a ninja gonna ninja and i don't know why we don't get that yet a man is gonna man honey black white purple pink or otherwise a man is gone man but at the fact that she continued to let him do it i mean if we gonna talk about it then let's talk go on scoot up this one here ain't for my bows it's for my beauties scoot up we gotta stop being so pinmatized that we're falling for anything I don't care if it's 10 inches rolled in diamonds, chocolate coated, and dipped in caramel with sugar coated sprinkles. If all I'm walking away with is a wet tail, I don't want it. I'm sorry, I don't want it. And I hear you, I do. But I was in love, she was in love. Baby, in the words of Tina Turner, what's love got to do with it, huh? Especially when my sanity is on the line. We gotta stop. All a man got to do is promise us the world, or in her case, be able to change a damn tire. And here we go, all in, heart first. There's a danger when you're all emotion and no intellect. Y'all better hear me when I say it. 
there is a danger in leading with your emotions. And she just showed you the danger. She showed you. So there's another story in the Bible, right? About this woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years. And the Bible says that she spent all she had on doctors and they didn't make her better, but they made her worse. My problem is, how much are you going to continue to spend on something that's proved that it can't help you, but it's only making you worse? No, I know the world wants to say right now, oh, oh my goodness, look what this woman went through. Oh my God, he manipulated her. But my bigger question is, why did you continue to allow him to? No, scoot up for a second. We gonna have to really talk. Because it wouldn't have been no story if she would have walked away on the first sign. She didn't have nothing invested in this. She didn't have any children. They weren't married in the beginning. Matter of fact, she hadn't even invested enough time. Come on, if we gonna talk about it, then let's talk. Scoot up for a second. For those of you who don't understand what I'm talking about, let me pause for a second and tell you about this story. I'm gonna give you a quick little recap. So this um, lady on TikTok, and I'm not gonna go through her name and all that. I'm sure a lot of people already know her name. But she goes on this escapade of 50 different 10 minute episodes telling about this man that she married. So here's the gist of the story. This lady met this man on two different dating apps, which she matched with him on. So one day her tire blew and she called him and he came and changed it. They went out to eat. Over the course of two weeks, they talked about marriage and other things and being together. In the process of this, COVID hit. So this is in 2020. He said he was looking for a house, but it would take some time. So he ends up quarantining quarantining at her house, right? She ends up getting pregnant and they decide that they want to buy a house. So he tells her and shows her paperwork showing that he's been approved for $750,000 to buy a house, right? After going back and forth about having the house and whether they didn't have the house, because one minute he said it was under contract, then another minute he said something else amongst other things, she finally calls the realtor and finds out that another couple has purchased it and it's not her husband, right? So now they've lost this house. Then she miscarried the child that she said she had with him and he didn't even go to the surgery with her because he said um, that he had an important meeting to go to at work. So she was left in recovery for three and a half hours waiting for him to come pick her up from the hospital. He stated that he was promoted on his job and then she shows him and uh, he shows her an offer letter. They look for another house that he states he's going to pay cash for, but the owners want to see proof of funds before they'll accept the offer, right? He says he'll show proof of funds once they accept the offer, so they keep going back and forth with this scenario, and he never shows proof of funds to them. However, she then asks him to show her the proof of funds, and he shows her his account and says he also has money in offshore accounts, from some arena league ball that he played at some point in his life. So that fell through as well. Then he tells her he wants to buy her a car. She wanted a Kia, but he wanted to get her a BMW, stating that he had one before and he totaled it. But when he got the settlement money from it being totaled, he went and bought a Ford. Y'all, I I can't make this stuff up. I I really can't. How did Jocelyn say? (laughs) I cannot. I cannot. So, he doesn't get it for her. But he says, due to his promotion to VP at the company, they sent him to pick out his own company car, which was a BMW. But he doesn't drive the company car home from work. He keeps it at work somewhere. So, now some of this may be a tad bit out of order because... I'm just going off what I remember here. So she asked him to take her to where he works. So she drives him there. He says he has to call someone to see if it's open. So then he gets on his phone and calls someone on the phone. I think it's supposed to be his assistant. They say everything is locked up so they can't get in. And so they drive all the way back home. Then one day, he tosses a ring on the bed and tells her he really wants her to know that he's really in it for the long haul, that they should just get married, so she agrees. 
she stated the first time that it fell through so she really didn't tell anyone she was going to get married and didn't invite anyone so they go i think to the courthouse they get married and then they go and eat chicken afterwards she says for two weeks it was all good then he ch he changed he started acting jealous he starts calling her at work telling her that some man showed up at the house and backed up into the driveway and asked for her he told her he thinks it was her ex so she's asking him all kind of questions to describe what this man looks like she then asked her neighbor for the footage from their camera that's facing the direction of her house y'all and there was nothing on the footage so he lied and she couldn't figure out why he would lie about someone showing up to the house and looking for her she tells him they should do marriage counseling so they go to counseling then one day she decides to go through his phone and she saw that he's having very sexual conversations about hooking up with women for money and talking about hooking or talking about hooking up with them at least he moves into the guest room. She pursues a new job opportunity and has to put his social on an application when she notices that the social that they put on the marriage application when they got married is different from the social that he's giving her now. The one on the marriage license is squeaky clean um, because she ran the background check, but this other social shows that he lived somewhere else than what he told her that he actually lived so apparently he has some kind of knee injury and it basically starts getting worse and worse she doesn't really know where he got it from but now he's not eating and he's not moving he's just laying in the bed and basically losing weight drastically so one day he tells her that his stepdaughter from a previous marriage has passed away and he needed two thousand dollars to help with the funeral arrangements for her not thinking um, anything about it she gives it to him because she said death isn't something that she plays with so she does some looking into him and found out about a marriage that he said happened in California actually happened in Georgia so she actually goes through the process of finding this ex-wife's information and she gives her a call the ex-wife answers the phone and says if you're calling me then I know it's bad and she says whatever he has told you don't believe it get out and don't look back because that's what she did and she don't want to look back she don't want to be involved so she asked the lady about her daughter that you know the man told her passed away and the lady actually tells her that her daughter is fine and she asked her well what did he tell you about my daughter and she could she said she couldn't bring it she didn't have the heart to tell her that this man had lied and told her that her daughter had passed away so then she finds out that neither she nor her daughter have even spoken to this man in years she also found an obituary of the man's mom and found out that this man actually had another ex-wife and that the two sisters that he told her he had and he'd been talking to are not on the obituary so she finally gets tired kicks him out on his birthday he leaves with two bags and clothes I, I'm trying to understand why it took this long but let me continue she gets on the phone um, well, she gets a phone call from one of his cousins who stated that he told her that he caught her, his wife, in bed with another man who happened to be a police officer. And the police officer used his service weapon to force him out the house. And they wanted to know from her what really happened because he's been a liar all his life. And the cousin told her that they didn't even know that he was married until he showed up at their house with this story. She asked about the family and finds out that he has an older brother and a twin, but no sisters. She ends up meeting him um, to sign divorce papers, and she can tell that he's lost a lot of weight, according to her, and that he's been living in, well, living out of his car. She said he smelled real bad, he was dressed real bad, it was just bad. So then she ends up speaking to the oldest brother who tells her he hasn't spoken to him in years and that his twin is the one with the life that he's been telling everybody about. So basically he's been perpetrating his, his twin's life to everybody else. 
So she told him that that's odd because every morning he's on the phone with the older bro older brother and telling her stuff that the older brother is telling him to tell her. And they're even laughing like they're having conversations back and forth. So basically he tells her it's a lie, right? And that there was probably nobody on the phone. Y'all, I, I really can't make this stuff up. I think she asked his um, asked about a cousin that he spoke to regularly and found out that the cousin was deceased. Um, so another blank call. She asked about his father's church that he took her to, and this man tells her that his father didn't even go to church, let's not have one. She asked about the sisters he supposedly had and found out they don't have any sisters. And the name that he gave her, one of them at least, was actually a niece. Then he tells her that he has an intense criminal record and that she, <clears throat> excuse me, should look him up. So she finally does this reverse, reverse image search and finds out that the picture of the company car, a Google picture. The picture of the bank statement, another Google picture. In the process, the aunt that she met, um, that the brother confirmed was not actually their aunt, but actually their mom's friend, or something like that she ends up calling and asking what is going on because he told them that he's getting a divorce same thing that he told everybody else she put him out the house and she basically told her that they're divorced they're not well they're getting a divorce they're no longer together so then she asked him about asked her about the baby and she tells her what baby and the lady tells her, well, he's been coming back and forth to Augusta and saying that you all had a baby, it's a baby boy, and that he's going to be getting his baby and bringing a baby down there. And she told her, no, not true, never had a baby. I had a miscarriage. And the aunt keeps telling her, but he told everybody that you had a baby. People have been trying to get together baby gifts to send to y'all and everything. So then when she looks up this criminal record, she finds out that he's been arrested. And the biggest one was for impersonating an officer, for which he had to do weekend jail, where he was able to work during the week, but he had to turn himself in on the weekend. Basically then, he disappears. She needs him in order to finalize the divorce. So she's calling all of the people that he supposedly associated with, and half of them saying they don't give a damn. She finds out that he's checked himself into a hospital for bed and food, basically, because remember, he's homeless. And somehow, someone tells him that he doesn't have to leave their marital home because they are still married. And he tells her he's coming back home. Well, she tries to get the police involved, who are basically telling her, well, he's right. You know, technically, you are his, his wife. You are married. This is still his home. There's really nothing they can do. But then the chief ends up looking him up and finds out that he has a warrant. So he tells her, let him come home. And when he comes back, basically call me and we'll come pick him up. So he ends up showing up. She calls the police. They show up, pick him up. She calls the dealership, tells them um, to come get the car because he's not making any payments on the car. The car has all of his belongings in it. So they come pick up the car. Then she finds out that the warrant that he had, which got him locked up, is actually expired. So he's going to be getting out of jail. She was in the process of moving anyway. So she pays the movers extra to finalize the move quickly and then she moves. He tries to contact her and she basically tells him, if you call me again, I'll get a restraining order or whatever. And that is the end of the story. Y'all, let me pause and take a sip <laughs> before we get into this, like, deeply, because, child, I, th this was a lot. So, I forgot to tell y'all that the ring um, that he actually proposed to her with, this ring was actually a ring that she said that she wanted. So, he ended up buying the ring, but she ended up finding out that this ring was fake he ended up getting it off Amazon. So this story has so many layers to it. I mean, layers upon layers upon layers. So now we're going to need to break this down a little bit, right? Because there's a few concerns that I have with this story. Um, but before we get there, this is the problem with us women. See, here's the thing. 
men are turned on by sight it's a proven fact if it looks good figure eight and it's curved the way they like it they going it's just how men are women are turned on by touch we can look at a man that's fine all day long and to us he's just a fine man in our thoughts he's a fine man that can possibly do something for us but in order for us to get turned on turned on it's the touch that's why I say we got to stop being so penmatized that we so stuck on what he can do in the bed or we so stuck on him touching us the right way that we're willing to throw wisdom to the wind just for a little bit of pipe. We got to do better. We got to do better. So if we look at it, so she got excited because this man had changed her tire. I understand a man doing something for you is going to make you a little excited, especially in this day and age when you can barely get a man to open the door for you. But she got excited because he changed her tire, right? They only talked for two weeks. Two weeks. So you're willing to throw your entire life on the table for a man that you've only known for two weeks to the point where you allow him to move in with you? Y'all, we got to stop. You don't know anything about him. This man could be a serial killer. He could be a mass SSA. Or you, you don't know nothing about this man. And you're willing to allow him into your vicinity. Allow him into your life. Because he gave you a few good words over two weeks. A man will promise you the world in order to get what he wants from you. And we just fall for it over and over again. We fall for these pretty words. I will give you the world. Yeah, it sounds good, but you can't. The only person with the world in the palm of their hands is God. Didn't y'all remember that song from, from Vacation Bible School? He's got the whole world in his hands. A man can't give you the world, honey. Make them come back down to earth and give you something more specific other than pretty words so she went all in over two weeks and she moved this man in with her okay let me give you that because like i said everybody's played the fool before plus she said this man was paying all the bills okay i'll give you that i'll play the devil's advocate for a moment but then within this matter of time she ends up getting pregnant so you got pregnant by a man that you didn't know so you don't know if this man is going to be a good father you don't know if this man has the ability to take care of you during a pregnancy or if this man is going to be a provider to you and your child once the child is born how can you know anything about this man in a matter of a few weeks less known a few months hell it's people who've been been married for years and find out that they once they woke up that they've been sleeping with a stranger so now we get into this house right press damn pause because she says that he showed her paperwork that he was approved for a house for over seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars if you have credit enough and have money enough to be approved for a house that's worth over $750,000, why are you living with me? Why are you trying to move into my rental? Please help me understand this. At some point, you got to make it make sense. We're going to get to the part where he was going back and forth with them. But before you even get there, the fact that this man says that he was approved for a house for over $750,000, but he is willing to move into your little rental instead of just going right out and buying a house. Come on now. If we're going to talk about it, then let's talk. I need y'all to scoot up. Why are you moving into a house with me when you can go out at any time and just buy a house right out? Because that's what he said. So then he goes back and forth about having a house and she's still clueless. You still clueless that it takes so much time, so long for you to get approved for this house and y'all to move in with this house only to find out that the house has been purchased by somebody else. Now, mind you, at this time, she's not married to him. They're still within the first few months of dating. And if this wasn't red flag enough for you to walk out the damn door, I don't know what else is. Story really could have stopped right there. Really could have stopped right there. But no, it continued. It continued. So the next thing, she has a miscarriage. 
And on the day that she's scheduled to go into the hospital to have a surgery, you somehow miraculously have a meeting at your job that you cannot miss. So not only did you miss my surgery to have for this, okay, because let's go back. She says, now this is where I have a problem with her story, right? When I said two plus two isn't equal in four. She said she went to the doctor, she had an ultrasound. The ultrasound was absolutely fine. Then she turns around and says the doctor called her later on that day and said that they couldn't find a heartbeat. So the doctor told her she can either take the pill or do the DNC. Press pause. What doctor is going to have an ultrasound with you that morning, call you that night and tell you that they're that they can't find a heartbeat on the baby and doesn't call you back in for another ultrasound? Just tells you, here, here's a pill, get rid of it. You can do it at home or you can have a DNC. What, what, when does, in what world does this happen? This, this is where I have a little bit of a, of a problem with her story because I just can't see a doctor not calling you back in for a second opinion. I just can't see it. Just telling you to take a pill and get rid of it. So, according to her story, she ended up opting to do it at home, to pass it at home. She took a pill. She was in the most excruciating pain of her life. Then when she went back in for a checkup is when she found out that she didn't pass everything and that she needed to come back in. Well, she needed to schedule to have the surgery done. So she goes in to have the surgery. He can't be there. So once the surgery is over with, she's supposed to be in recovery for an hour to an hour and a half. They're calling him to come pick her up. They can't reach him. They can't reach him. Supposedly some assistant is answering the phone talking about he's in a meeting. When they finally do get in touch with him, he's stuck in traffic. It takes him three and a half hours. Now you supposedly, allegedly, just went through one of the most traumatic times in your life. And this man isn't rushing to be by your side. And again, you don't see a problem with this. That you continue on this escapade. I have a problem. And I have questions because in my mind, as women, as black women, we can't be this damn dumb. I'm just, I'm just not willing to believe as a culture that this is where we've arrived at post pandemic. I just can't believe it. So then we arrive at the second house. Now, mind you, as she continued on her story, she said it's probably been about 25 houses that they've attempted to go through this year process that actually fell through. And it wasn't even a year process because at some point she ended up stopping trying to look at houses. So now we're talking about about 25 houses within a matter of months. And she didn't see an issue with this. So okay, we get to the second house, which he says at this point he's going to do a cash offer because he says he has enough money in the bank to go out and buy a house flat out between his account and between offshore accounts. Press pause again. Because if you have that kind of money, and I believe the house was, what was it, 600 and some thousand dollars? If you have that kind of money in the bank, why the hell are we struggling? First of all, why did we go through a whole financing process? That's number one. But number two, why are we struggling so hard to get a house when you can just walk up to one, pull the money out of your account, put the money on the table and get a house? Come on now, y'all, we got to be strong in the words of the dog. Because I don't, I, I really don't understand. I, at this, Like I told y'all, by the time we got to episode three, I was stressed out. And I wasn't stressed out because of him, because like I said, a ninja is gone ninja. I was stressed out because of her. Because sis, we supposed to be the backbone. God created you to be his help me. How the hell you gonna help him meet anything when you just as delusional as he is manipulative? Please help me understand. So now we go through this house. He refusing to show proof of funds so that they can get the house. Refusing to show proof of funds. Please help me understand. If I'm really serious about getting a house for my significant other and I actually have the money in the account, why am I going back and forth with the owner of the house on, well, 
I'll show proof of funds when you accept the offer. And they're saying, well, I'll accept the offer when you show proof of funds. And he's refusing to show proof of funds because they haven't accepted the offer. What the hell? What? And then you ask him to show you the account. Now, see, this is where my inner Virgo sets in. Because you he showed you this supposed bank account. You didn't attempt to take the phone to scroll because, see, me... If I'm going to ask you to show me your bank account, I'm going to go through the bank account and I need to know how often you're getting deposits in it, where the deposits are coming from, if you got any withdrawals coming out the account. So you didn't attempt to do any of this, sis. Please help me understand. Then she says that one of her uncles didn't, one of his uncles told him or somebody told him not to show her what was in the account, but y'all are in a relationship and you're living together. And this wasn't enough for you to tell this ninja to get his stuff and hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more. You could, again, please remember, they are not married. And at this point, they don't have a child. She's had a miscarriage. So there is nothing keeping you in this situation where it seems like the only person that's benefiting out of it is him because you're not getting anything. You're just being left on the table over and over and over again. This man can't even show you the accounts. Then he tells you he wants you, wants to buy you a car. Now, he done already showed you this supposed account with this money in it. So that meant if he's willing to pull 600 and some thousand dollars out of an account to pay for an, a house, surely he can pull 90000 out to pay for a car. So now your house falls through. And press pause again. Because in what world? Please tell me in what world a man crashes and totals a BMW and when he gets his settlement money, his settlement money, he turns around and buys a Ford. Please tell me in what world it happens that you decide instead of going to get another BMW with your settlement money, you're going to go get a Ford. Y'all, I cannot make this stuff up. We cannot make this stuff up, but somebody is making this stuff up. <laughs> and I'm trying to understand. As as I said before, as Jocelyn said, I cannot. So then he says, he's been promoted to VP, to VP of the company. And they sent him to pick out his own company car. Please tell me when this happens. When does it happen? that you are allowed to go now maybe i've never been in high enough in the highest of high of echelons of companies so maybe this happens in workplaces that i know nothing about so if it does please drop in the comments and i will retract this statement but please tell me when in the hell do you get promoted to VP of a company and they tell you to go to the dealership and pick out whatever car you want please tell me when that happens and the car that he happens to pick out is a BMW that he doesn't drive home now what is the point of having a company car that you cannot utilize except when you are at work so according to her He picks out this car and he tells her he's leaving the car at work. And you have no questions. No questions. You just accept this as fact, as biblical. The level of questioning I would have done within the confines of this relationship with all of these situations this ninja would have thought he was in an interrogation for unaliving somebody because please uh, please tell me how he's able to just tell you anything and you're able to just believe it see that's why these ninjas are able to get over on us the way that they do because we don't ask no questions we just let them tell us whatever they want to tell us say whatever they want to say and we just believe it because we're penmatized The pain is too good and we're willing to go all in because we don't want to let it go. We so stuck on the touch that we're willing to go damn insane just to have somebody laying in the bed next to us touching us. It's got to stop. It has got to stop. It really does. So 
he tells her he leaves this car at work every day. So, y'all, I, 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 have, I have no words. I'm trying to figure out the words to be on her side why she just accepted this and and i can't i'm sorry I, even being a fool for love that fool goes so far before you become a damn fool this girl i okay so now she asks him to take her to where he works and he gets on the phone with someone and they tell him that the place is not open. So they done drive, drove all the way to this place. He done showed her this is where I work. But you, as VP, don't have a key or a code to get in the building. And she asks no questions as to why you are the, P, the VP, but you don't have access to the building that you're the VP at. Somebody please make it make sense. Please, maybe you're the VP of a company and I don't know how this works. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the delusional one. If I'm the delusional one, please tell me that post-pandemic, that somehow VPs lost access to the building that they're overseeing the operations at. As the vice president, that you cannot get into a building that you work at unless it's already open. Please help me understand. And again, she just accepted. She accepted it. I'm confused. And they drive back home. While I was at the building, I would have told him, please show me the car that you claim is parked here, that you don't drive home, you leave. What are you doing as the VP of this company that you need a company car that just sits at the company? So what are you doing with the car? What do you do on this job as the VP? Y'all, yeah. okay. So then, now mind you, again, they are not married. Then he comes in and tosses a ring on the bed. Now you've had 30 red flags already. This man comes in, tosses a ring on the bed, and you are willing to just say, I do, after all of the red flags that you already have. Y'all, we got to be strong. That, like, that's all I can say. We got to be stronger than this. We got to be stronger than this. We have to really learn some self-love. Some of y'all need to go back and watch my videos for Wellness Waves Wednesdays on the Heartbreak Hotel and getting over heartbreak. Because what we do is instead of allowing ourselves to heal from the last heartbreak we were in, we jump headfirst right into another relationship knowing we are already broken because we don't want to be alone. We don't want to be alone. We have a problem being all one. We are so scared to be all one with ourselves. We put all of ourselves into someone else. In broken pieces. Not whole. We don't wait until we're healed and our heart has been healed and we're whole. And we can think clearly and we have our emotions in check before we jump in another relationship. No, we bounce from relationship to relationship to relationship taking on soul tie after soul tie after soul tie after mental tie after emotional tie and we wonder why we're all emotionally fucked up to the point where if this story is true that we're willing to ignore all of the red flags just to say that we have somebody come on y'all we gotta do better we if we gonna talk about it, let's talk. Scoot up for a second. Let's talk. Because I don't want to hear no more stories like this. I don't want to hear any more like this. Because if this is the condition that we have devalued ourselves to, then we in trouble. We in trouble as a whole, as women. And we need to link up. We need to go to some sanctuaries. We need to go to the River Jordan and take a dip. I don't know what we need to do, but we got to get it together. If we are still falling for bullshit. If we are still letting people piss on us and call it rain. Come on now, you. we got to do better. <sighs> Have y'all hit that like and subscribe button? Please hit the like and subscribe. 
please. <laughs> um, so then she says it was going good for two weeks and then he changed. Started acting jealous and all this extra stuff now. This is where I have to give her some credit, right? So transparent moment for me. So I was married, right? And I promise you, I married Dr. Jekyll and woke up with Mr. Hyde. I can't make this stuff up. After we said, before we said I do, this was my knight in shining armor. I went through a period of time where I had lost my job and, um, he would go buy food for me and the kids. He would cook the food, make sure he ate. He was, uh, they ate. I mean, he was an awesome cook. I mean, amazing. When we said he wanted to be underneath me like 24-7, he was loving, he was caring. Because see, my love language is touch and affection. So he was constantly underneath me, wanted to be near me and the kids, make sure we were okay, make sure we were secure. Baby, after I said I do, this nigga said I don't. I promise you it turned into... Um, I hope you don't think I'm going to be underneath you all the time. And I'm looking at him like, you know how Michael Myers, before he got ready to unalive, somebody would tilt their head to the side. I'm looking at him like, bro, did you, I just know. I just know I didn't get set up for the okie doke. Because when he proposed to me the first time, I told him no. I said no because I said marriage to me because I had been married before. So I told him marriage to me felt like a trap that if it went bad, I couldn't get out of it. He, no, I'm not going to do that to you. I just want to love you and show you what true love really looks like. Me being dumb like her. Me being dumb. Said, okay, all right. Finally, we ended up going to the ring shop, right? And see me, I don't like real diamonds. Sorry, I don't. Ever since I saw Blood Diamond, I do not like real diamonds. So a friend of mine told me about Diamond Nexus Lab. So Diamond Nexus Lab is this jewelry store where they actually manufacture or grow the diamond. So instead of allowing it to go through its natural process, they take it through the process, but it's done basically with the machine. So um, we went in there, and at the time, they had a diamond ring that they were raffling off. So we ended up putting our name, well, put my name into the raffle for the ring. So I told him, if we ring the, win this ring, I will marry you. i be damned if within a few days, that lady didn't call me and told me we won that ring. So I ended up marrying him, but don't get me wrong. We had been together for a little bit and I actually did love him. You know, we, we didn't live together, but we spent time together. He spent time with kids. He showed me how he was with the kids. He, you know, he did all these amazing things for us. But when I tell you that man flipped into somebody I did not know and could not recognize, I looked at him and I told him, cause I'm a writer. I love writing. I told him I couldn't dream up a character like you in one of my fictional novels. I promise you I couldn't. So I completely understand him changing after two weeks. But I'm trying to understand how she said he changed after two weeks. Baby, he was already changed before you got with him. That's my problem that I have with her story. He was already a character out of a horror novel before you got with him. So to turn around and say he changed after two weeks, changed into what? What did he change into? He was already a fictional character before you said I do to him. And you said I do anyway. So what made you think, with all of the red flags that you had before you said I do, that there would be white flags after you said I do? And that somehow... See, this is what I don't get about us as women. Somehow we think I do changes a man. It doesn't. It doesn't. I, I keep telling y'all, I'm going to have to put it on a t-shirt. A ninja is going to ninja. A man is going to man. I don't care what color he is. White, black, or in between. A man is going to be a man is going to be a man. And I don't care how good your coochie is. I don't care how good the tussy pat is. Your tussy pat ain't good enough, good enough to change a man from being who a man is going to be. It's not... Please get that delusion out of your head. Y'all, this whole story, I kept saying this girl must not watch Investigation Discovery. She must not. Impossible. There's no way 
that someone who watches Investigation Discovery, someone who is into true crime shows, baby, because I watch them faithfully. I watch them so much that my oldest daughter had to tell me, Mama, if the police come to me because they want to question me because they say you committed a crime, I am immediately getting me an attorney because there's no way I'm going to be able to tell the police that you do not know how to do what they said you did and this is all you watch all day. I watch all of them snap for my man. What's the rest of them? I watch all of them. Why? That's why I started my true crime show, my murder mystery theater channel, Inky Noir Champagne Mysteries. That's why I started that because I love them so much. But one thing for me is they teach me to pay attention to people. They teach me to pay attention to behaviors. That's why when people start talking to me, I can look at them and say, yeah, sis, that don't make sense. That you gotta make two plus two equal four when it comes to me. Because I'm paying attention to everything that you say. I'm one of those people that pay attention and I listen more than I speak. Because I want to hear what's being said to me so that I can respond to what's being said. And not just what I'm formulating in my head. And I don't understand. I don't understand. She can't watch them shows and go through what she went through. Because she would have been notified. Her, as my call them, spidey senses would have went off day one when you tried to move in with me claiming you had all this damn money but you got to come live in my rental and you're cool with living in my rental but you got all this money in the bank it doesn't make sense and when it doesn't make sense to me I have a problem with it I don't know about y'all but I have a problem with it so then she talked to the ex-wife talk to the ex-wife and you find out from the ex-wife that everything he said was a lie and that wasn't your cue right then to get the hell out of this marriage because a man that will lie to cover up his life or his past life will lie to cover up the fact that he did something to you she don't even understand how bad this situation could have gone you just got with the right manipulator sis this man could have been anybody and you wouldn't even know because you were so penmatized. You were so, oh my God, I'm in love, but in love with what? You don't even know who you were in love with. Come on now, at some point, somebody got to let go of the delusion and be real. Somebody has to be real because I want better for my sisters. I want better for my brothers. I want us all to live happy and live happily ever after with someone who's going to love us and treat us like the kings and queens that we were meant to be treated like. And that can't happen if we're consistently falling for delusional feast of grandeur and we're not paying attention to the signs. Come on now, we got to do better. When that woman told you that her daughter was still alive and you gave this man $2,000 to bury her, sweetie, my next question to him would have been, sir, where's my money? Where did you send my money to? But no, she sat back and didn't say nothing. That's why I said there's a few points in this story where I'm like, eh, two plus two just isn't equal in four. Because I'm not that hung up to not be alone. That I'm, And furthermore, if you got all this money in the bank, why are you asking me for $2,000? Couldn't you have just gone in one of your offshore accounts? Better yet, why are we going into my account at all? And you have all this money in the bank. You got to make it make sense because it's not the sense ain't making right now. The sense ain't sensing. It's not sensing. You find the obituary and you find out that the two sisters that he's been talking to ain't even on the obituary. My next question to bruh man is going to be, where are these two sisters at that you say you be talking to all the time? So now I need to know who these women that you're talking to. Where is the questions that she should have been asking him during this time? Where? Then she finds out all the time that he said he was on the phone with his brother. Actually wasn't nobody on the other end. So you mean to tell me that you see your man on the telephone with somebody telling you that he's talking to somebody. But you don't. First of all, 
what kind of phone that he does he have that he can be on a phone call and you don't even hear the slightest voice on the other end on the phone please make it make sense to me and somehow you don't notice that his screen is black and he's not actually talking to somebody yeah come on now come on because even when come on now yeah come on if somebody is on the phone, you can still hear slightly a conversation between them and somebody else. Even if you can't make out the words that they're saying. You're telling me that he was on the phone and the phone was on, what, turned down so you couldn't hear the person on the other end? You never saw the phone light up to show that he was actually talking to somebody else? You didn't pay attention to any of this? Any of this? Come on, sis. Come on. I really don't even need to go any further in this story. But the real stressed out part for me was when she said that she found out that the two social security numbers didn't match, but you still had to get a divorce. Why would you still need to get a divorce if the two social security numbers don't match? Wouldn't you just get an annulment because your marriage wasn't valid anyway? Come on, y'all that watch Investigation Discovery ought to be able to put two and two together. You ought to be able to help solve this crime. If the two social security numbers didn't match, that meant I didn't marry who I said I married. So therefore, the whole marriage is invalid. So I should need to go through the court and get a whole divorce. Now, if I have any attorneys that are confidants, if I'm mistaken, please let me know. But if you married me under a false name or you married me under a false pretense with a false social security number, doesn't that make everything that we did after you signed them papers invalid too? So why do you need a whole divorce from somebody who falsified the marriage license? Wouldn't you just need an annulment? Please help me understand this. Please help me understand. So you went through a year of hell, sis, why? Why? If this story is in fact true, that meant you put yourself through a year worth of hell. For what? For what? And you're telling your story because you want to keep other women from going through what you went through. Hell, if other women didn't stop at episode three and say, nah, this right here is a, a clue for me not to go any further. Then they're lost too. I, I, I don't understand. I really don't understand why we are in a day and age. Ladies, ladies, let me talk to you. While we're in a day and age, while we're so hung up that we can't be alone, why we need a man to be our provider, why we need a man to uplift us, why we need a man to be our validation, why we need a man to be our security. When we are in a day and age where it's women empowerment, everything, women's rights, everything, women's this, women's that, you don't need a man to make you secure in yourself. Did you not hear what Cat Williams said on his stand up? It's called self esteem, it's esteem of your mother freaking self. We got to get to a place where we love us. I need you to love everything from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I need you to love everything from the way your eye blinks to the way your lips curl when you speak. I need you to love everything from the color of your skin to the bend in your knees. I need you to love everything from the rolls in your stomach to the dimples in your thighs. You need to get to a place where you love everything about you. Because once you learn how to love everything about you, baby, it will deflect anything that doesn't reflect that love. Come on, if we're going to talk about it, let's talk. The problem with us women, if we've gotten to a place where we have allowed other people to define us, define our worth, define who we are, define who we're not, 
We're arguing with transsexuals on whether or not we're women or not. We're arguing with this person. We're arguing with that person. Any person tells us we're ugly. Now we're down in our spirit. A man breaks up with us. Now we don't feel like we can go on anymore. Maybe God is removing them out of your life so that he can set you up for something greater. And he can't set us up for anything greater because we're constantly settling for lesser. We're constantly setting for lesser because we haven't learned how to love ourselves and we don't know what we're worth. So we're constantly putting our worth in the hands of people who don't understand our value. Your heart is like a Fabergé egg. Please go and listen to Heartbreak Hotel if you're struggling in this area. Because once you start treating yourself, treating your heart, treating your worth, treating your value like it's the most priceless thing on the face of this earth, nothing will be able to take that value from you ever again. Ever again. I need us, I need her to get to a place where not only do we love ourselves, but we know ourselves. We know ourselves. Because once you know you, you will deter and push away anything and walk away from anything that doesn't reflect the love that you see within you. I remember before we closed, there was a movie, one of my favorite movies. It's called Heat with Robert De Niro and Al Pacino. And Robert De Niro said, Don't get so attached to anything that you can't walk away from in 60 seconds flat if you feel the heat around the corner. I'm telling you, don't get so attached to anything that you can't walk away from in 60 seconds flat if it's bringing heat around the corner. Love yourself enough to walk away. I mean, if y'all need me to do more videos on self-love and self-care and teaching you how to love everything from the top of your head to the tips of your toes baby we can that's what this channel is for i promise you this that's what this channel is for but i don't like this we gotta do better than this than that to go through that for so long it's insane and insanity is defined as doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result We can't keep going in and out of the same relationships and expecting somehow the relationship to change. We can't keep going after the same men and expecting a different result from the men that we go after. How about we get ourselves together and let God send us the men who are destined for our lives? That way, you'll truly know what real love is. That's all I have for this one. I promise you I want to go live in order for us to have a real conversation about this situation and situations like this. Maybe we'll call it a story time and all of us can give our stories and learn from each other. But we got to do better. We got to be strong in the words of the dog because we have a generation that's coming after us. And we have to teach our generation, our next generation, better than what we did and what we subjected ourselves to in the name of so-called love because true love is out there we just have to sit back and let it come to us and know what it looks like when it comes that's all i have for this one before we go have you all taken out the time all of you true crime connoisseurs and Lovers of all things murder mystery and true crime and murder mystery theater to check out my newest channel, Inky Noir Champagne Mysteries. This channel is dedicated to all things true crime and murder mystery, but it's done in the tone of an old school um, Alfred Hitchcock with rain in the background and suspense music. So, if you're into that kind of thing, please check out my new channel. I'm going to drop the trailer right after this. Confidants, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. 
Raise your glasses, clink, and let's drink. Till we speak again. Ta-ta. For all of my true crime buffs, step into the shadows of the Noir Syndicate with me and unravel the mysteries that lurk in the depths of the night at Inky Noir Champagne Mysteries. Join us on a journey through the realm of true crime and enigmatic tales where every story is a puzzle waiting to be solved. From chilling murders to perplexing disappearances, our channel delves into the darkest corners of human nature, offering tantalizing blends of true mystery and late night story time for your nighttime indulgences. Go on over and subscribe now and prepare to lose yourself in a world of intrigue, suspense, and the allure of the unknown. So grab a glass of champagne, make sure your doors are secure, and join us in the Noir Syndicate where the truth is the elusive prize and justice the final destination. Welcome to Inky Noir Champagne Mysteries. Sure.